Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome back to UK here. This is of course Fishing North Atlantic and if you saw the last episode then you know exactly what we're doing. This is an element of voice attack. This is a code or a command or a macro that I set up in voice attack for Fishing North Atlantic. And uh, let's just um, let's just send this to make sure that we're sending that command to the correct uh, game. Right, so basically all this is going to do is press the R button for two and a half seconds every 10 seconds. Now, I've already shown that this works, but unfortunately, whilst I was trying to prove that it worked, we, um, we were following the autopilot and as we turned, whilst we were putting nets in, we bust that net. That then made all of our nets completely broken, which meant that our haul was awful. So today I'm going to set up, <clears throat> excuse me, one very long, very straight net dropping process. I'm going to start the automated process and then I'm going to walk away. I'm going to go make a cup of tea and we're going to see whether that works. Now, I don't think it's a good dynamic to the game. I hope they look at this video and they change it, but it would be quite useful as well for me to be able to come up and set 40 nets or 150 nets if I have a bigger boat whilst doing something else. That actually is quite appealing, but boring as hell for you guys, because I won't be here. And I don't need to be here to do it. I've proven this already. So that's what we're doing today. And uh, you can see whether it works or not. I don't know if it's going to work perfectly or whether it's all going to go horribly wrong. Hope for the best and see how it goes. So we've bought new nets. We've got 40, hey up. We've got 40 brand new nets on the boat there, as you can see. We've got the crew. They shouldn't be working right now, but they are. I don't know why I can't click on the crew right now. Maybe because this is up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so these guys should be resting. You can do some cooking so that everyone's got some food. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hot tail it out the port. And yes, if you haven't seen my videos before, I'm using a wheel on the game, which uh, works perfectly sometimes. Oh my god. Seriously, game, would you stop? which works perfectly sometimes, but uh, since the latest patch, we've had a few problems with uh, steering and throttle and such. So part of today's test is gonna be whether or not it's working again. And it seems like it is, because one thing I can do is accelerate and uh, steer at the same time, which yesterday I couldn't. So that's good. Although, although, does seem to be getting stuck on the accelerator. I don't know why that is. Oh, excuse me. These crappy, cheap-ass pedals are uh, sliding about on the floor and I can't reach them. So let's try and get some height on the cam. Zoom out a little bit so I can see where I'm going. Don't want to crash again. If you haven't seen that, go back about two, three episodes and you'll see, you'll see how close we came to sinking this fantastic ship. Okay, so we're pretty much out of port. And it's night time, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to set up the route. Let's hot tail it to here first. One thing you mustn't do when you're doing this, you can see, oops, you can see some of the lines that I left out yesterday. They're all broken, so I just couldn't be bothered bringing them in. I'm a little concerned now that I've said that, that because they're broken, it's going to make these broken. That's a bit of a worry. Oh dear gosh, I hope that isn't the case. I really hope that isn't the case. Right, we're going to go down. Let's go just in a straight line. What is going on here? In a straight line towards the very, very deep water. I don't know what it's like down here. I've never been, so it'll be interesting. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether or not that is uh, going to be dangerous weather or good weather or what I have no idea so we've got autopilot on we're going to phone the crew we're going to get uh, somebody to prepare the pots we have to go we have to go to third person cam it won't work otherwise and uh, it doesn't matter what I do with the camera it's always going to reset it so here we go set the nets Set 
set the nets. Okay. Excuse me whilst I just fix this. So trying to bind this to that has seemingly broken the voice attack thing. So we'll try again with that off. Set the nets. So what should happen is every 10 seconds it presses the R button for two and a half seconds. Now, stopped command because the focus was lost. How was the focus lost? Let me try this again, sorry. Let's try again. Set the nets. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to hang around and watch the first two, and then I'm going to go off and I'm going to make a cup of tea, all right? So I'm going to turn the HUD off. Um, look, my nets are red. These are brand new nets. That is definitely broken. Right, okay, scratch this. Scratch this. Stop the nets. Stop the nets. Okay, this is busted. This is a broken mechanic. So this is a brand new net, and you can see that it's red already. And I assume that that means it's broken, okay? So we're gonna go back into port. It may be a case that all nets are broken, I don't know. It could just be totally broken. If it is, then I won't even bother doing this episode. I'll just wrap this up, add it on to the end of the last one. Right. I forget how long the nets need to stay in the water to, uh, to disappear, to be lost. So uh, we'll come all the way back up to port. And we'll, we'll basically sit in port and we'll start again. For God's sake. It looks like the throttle is permanently stuck on and I don't know why that is. I honestly couldn't tell you what's causing that but whilst that's happening I can't steer the boat. We've got a slight problem. I think in their haste to rush out fixes, they may have introduced loads and loads of bugs. boat right we're in port we're gonna skip time we're gonna skip a week victory is too tired to work and pearl is too tired to work that's a silly dynamic as well um, to think that you'd make them stand out there for a week is just silly Right, we're going to skip 24 hours so that everyone's rested. We're going to go to the fish market, fishing gear, we're going to buy some nets. Now we're going to look at the map and make sure that our old nets have gone. It looks like they have. Which is great. So theoretically then, 
we can actually go and test this theory out. Right, let's try again. And the steering mechanics and the, the throttle mechanics do appear to be quite broken at the moment. So I have to be careful. Oh crap, that's not careful. Wow, 17 damage on the hull. The, the problem is that the throttle change now is so slow that uh, I'm completely out of sync with how the boat actually operates. Ordinarily, that would have been, you know, I'd have hit the accelerator pl within plenty of time. But now it just, it doesn't seem to react very quickly at all, which is what's causing these uh, little collisions to occur. Right. Let's go out to there. Now, before I start setting any nets, okay, I'm going to check the nets. So. So these are just telling me 165 meter lines. Yeah? That's the permanent acceleration thing that I'm struggling with. That may be my device. I don't know what's causing that. So these are not damaged nets. These are perfect nets. These are in perfect condition. Okay? They're not saying damaged nets or anything of the like. So we should now be able to go out and put these nets out automatically without any issue, theoretically. So, we'll start our route off again. Come on, zoom out. Go right down here to the tip of the bad sea. Or the big sea. The big bad sea. The big bad sea. Oh, look, we've got the Aurora Boralis to uh, keep us entertained this evening. That's beautiful. Right. Crew. On. Point. You. Prepare gear. Hang on, why have we got 160... Oh, I bought the wrong size nets, didn't I? What a buffoon. All right, prepare the 165 nets. Let's start there. That's my mistake. All right, we have to go to third person. Look at that, isn't that stunning? I love that. So we have to go to third person and... Uh, away we go. I just need to turn this on because I forgot to do that and we'll watch the first couple I'll watch the first couple uh, and then I'll speed lapse the rest and um, go make a cup of tea and we'll see whether or not I can fully automate the setting of nets I'm so annoyed that I've bought the wrong type of nets that is annoying me but you can see the net color is no longer red so that is definitely a bug in the game Get rid of the HUD and hopefully it'll still work, we'll see. Okay, so I'm, I'm fairly confident that that's working now. So uh, I'm going to literally leave the computer, I'm not going to touch anything, I'm not even going to be in the room. And uh, unless we bump into an AI boat, we should be absolutely fine. So um, I'm annoyed that I haven't got all the same nets. That is a frustration. Um, I'm half tempted to go back into port and change that, but I won't. I'll, uh, I'll suffer the consequences of my stupidity and uh, we'll have half and half. But um, I wouldn't have to do any of this if it wasn't for the fact that this mechanic is so bad and that the game is so currently broken all over the place. Um, I did warn that this was gonna happen and I know the devs hate me for saying it publicly, but to be honest with you, you should have a PR person in fact, you could employ me if you want, and I'll be the PR person to go and tell everybody what the problems are and what you're doing to fix them, and how soon people can expect these bugs to be fixed. Because right now, I, I get the impression, I've worked in the industry, this is a company that are trying to rush out fixes, and all that happens when you do that is you create more bugs. It's not the way to do it. 
you need to keep your head, you need to keep calm, you need to keep focused, you need to keep track of what needs to be fixed and what you're working on and what has been fixed, etc. It's very important that you keep abreast of everything and not try to just quickly do as many things as you can. That's not the way to fix a game. That's not the way to fix a software application. It won't work. But anyway, this is a, a test for the automated system. So I'm going to go make a brew and uh, come back in 5-10 minutes and hopefully all of the lines will be set. See you in a bit. I'll take my phone with me so that I can uh, entertain myself. Hi guys, I actually went for a little bit longer than I anticipated, uh, got downstairs and um, had loads of messages from uh, loads of you lot who have recently joined the channel and been watching these videos and enjoying them, thank you so much. A for watching, B for commenting, I really do appreciate it, and when you hit that like button that really, that really is like the cherry on the top of the cake. Now, a lot of the videos that I've released early on, the audio quality was appalling, I apologise for that, hopefully this is much better. But um, at the end of the day, yes, a lot of you are saying to me, uh, 
It's like, I think you're trying to catch me out. You're saying uh, you're recording ahead of time, so you, you know, any advice we give you, we don't see for about three or four videos. Yes, that's exactly the case, because if I didn't get two or three videos ahead of you, then if I have a day where I can't record or I can't edit, like yesterday when I had no internet, I wouldn't have been able to upload anything, then it would break the sequence. So I have to be four or five videos ahead of you just to keep on track, just to keep things ticking over. So I, I openly admit that. I've never tried to insinuate anything else. Now there's a lot of YouTubers out there who do exactly the same thing. In fact, most YouTubers do exactly the same thing. And a lot of them pretend that they don't. But if you actually analyze the videos they've got, they're wearing the same t-shirt or the lighting is exactly the same. You can see on all of my videos, I've got a clock here. So you can see exactly what time I recorded this. Um, I frequently show you the get me saving the game, which has a game save date on it. So yeah, it's not like you're catching me out. It's, you know, it's evident. It's there to be seen. It's, this is exactly the point. Now, all the early videos that I released, they were effectively me playing the game, looking for bugs, looking for issues and trying to find solutions and asking questions, not necessarily of you, but of myself and just openly thinking so that when I come back to review the game, which I have now done, I've got all of that content in place and all of the issues and problems and thoughts that I had whilst I was playing the game are there. That's why I say what I say when I say it. Okay. Now, if you look at the title of those early videos, it's a critical analysis gameplay video. That's exactly what it is. It's me playing the game so that I can review the game. So all of the stuff that you see in there will end up in the, in the review. The good stuff, the bad stuff, and everything in between. Okay, so yes, that is the situation. And that's the situation for 99.9% .9 of YouTubers. And anyone who tells you different is lying to you. Now, it's not always the case. Uh, obviously, if I do a live stream, then that is immediate. And quite often, if I do get four or five videos ahead, I do have other things to do in my life. And we might get to the point where I'm only one video ahead of you, and then I need to start creating content. So, yeah, there are situations where that isn't exactly the case, but nine times out of ten, I try to create at least a little bit of a buffer so that if anything goes wrong or anything gets in the way in my end, I can still produce the content for you. And hopefully, hopefully, that's working out okay for you. Now, we've seen a lot of new subscribers coming to the channel because of this game, and I'm so grateful to you for being here. And uh, that's why I've continued to create content, because I want to continue producing in interesting content on this game for you. This is a game that I really want to see evolve and become more than it is right now. And many of you feel the same, because you all tell me that you feel the same. Now, there are going to be some people who think it's perfect the way it is, and that's fine as well. I've re re constantly reiterated that we need to have a casual mode and a hardcore mode. I said that back in Fishing Barrent C and unfortunately they haven't done it, but my God, look how gorgeous this looks. That is just stunning. I love how they've done that. The net fishing mechanics, I haven't been here. Have we had any problems? I mean, I literally haven't been in the room. So this mechanic is definitely not good for simulation players like me because I, I'm, I'm not doing it. The game is doing it itself. And all I've done is set up a macro to press the R button for two and a half seconds every 10 seconds. And here we are, setting lines. Now, you might say, well, that's good. And I might agree with you in certain circumstances. If we had the kind of control over the, over the crew to be able to say to them, hey, every 10 seconds I want you to put a line in and we set the autopilot to follow a route, but only turn when we're not setting a net. How awesome would that be? But then I'd be in control of it. Whereas as it is right now, if I try and take off my automated net dropping system, which I could do, I could turn it off. I'm not going to, but I could. Let me just turn off the microphone thing for that because it's, it's, it's trying to read all my, all my commands. Um, yeah, so I mean, I could turn that off and take over and drive and drop the nets myself. But quite literally, all I am doing in that instance is pressing one button every 10, 20 seconds for two and a half seconds. So, I mean, how boring is that? Why would I want to keep doing that? That's rubbish. So I might as well just set up an automated system, which is what this video is, okay? So I've proven that it works, my system, and you can set this up yourself. All you have to do is create a macro that sends a command to the game to press the button every 10 seconds. I, I'm pretty sure every 15 seconds works better, but uh, when I did 15 seconds, it didn't work for whatever reason. I don't know why. 
um, and then just set autopilot on the boat. And then you don't even have to be in the room. As long as you've got one li nice, long, straight route to drop your nets on, it will just do everything itself and you don't need to be involved at all. Now, I've just turned something off on voice attack, so I'm a bit concerned it's not going to drop the next net, but we'll see. Maybe I can get some cool footage. Ah, I see it's still working. Maybe I can get some cool footage of the nets going out. I hate this. This is so ugly. Not only is it ugly, it's it takes up so much of the screen. Why does it need to be so big? Why can't we just have like an arrow down the bottom and a, like a red marker and a green marker to indicate left and right or port and starboard as I should say apologies to all you proper fishermen out there there's a lot of proper fishermen watching the channel which is brilliant and I in no way pretend to know anything about fishing I am noob 101 when it comes to fishing I mean I know how to fish I have fished in the past but if you took me out to sea and asked me to start dropping nets and pulling lines in and stuff I you'd very quickly see how little I know also how unfit I am unfortunately that hasn't always been the case. I used to be very fit, I'll have you know, in case Tommy Hardstair wants to give me a load of abuse for that. But uh, anyway, maybe we can get some gorgeous footage. Look at this. Look how stunning that is. Oh, man. That's going to be my thumbnail picture, I think. If, 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 yes, we want a nice bit of colour around the moon. That looks gorgeous. Just before the next net goes in. <laughs> because it automatically puts me in that camera view, which I also hate with abundance. Abundance? That's not the right word, is it? A passion, that's what I should say. Maybe this, yeah, maybe something like this. But anyway, I've shown you the net bug. If there's a single net that you own in the water that's damaged, just one, then all of your nets are damaged. And we were pulling in about 200 to 400 kilograms on totally damaged nets. Totally damaged nets that hadn't been put out properly, hadn't been left for the right amount of time. I mean, just, they should have been destroyed, in my humble opinion. They should have just fallen to the bottom of the ocean, and we should have been fined for doing that. Because although I don't proclaim to know anything about fishing, you do pick up the odd bit and bob here and there, don't you? And one of the things that I've seen on some of the fishing programs that I watch is that they have to, if one of the nets gets snagged and they can't pull it in, for whatever reason, they don't know what it's snagged on, a rock, uh, a shipwreck, could be anything, a pipeline. Rather than damaging whatever's down there or damaging the boat, um, they have to radio into the port authorities and they say, can we drop the net? And they tell them where the net is going to be dropped and then they drop it if they get permission. Uh, and I think that's something that they should add in the game. That extra layer of immersion would definitely be high up on my tick list on my checklist for, for awesomeness. I mean, this is such a gorgeous game. Look how beautiful it looks. Look at that. That is stunning. That is absolutely stunning. Um, and I just wish that it had a hardcore mode to go with it. Now, maybe maybe they will do it, maybe they won't, because, because I've been so honest about the game, which is what I do with all of my reviews and all of my gameplay videos, I don't just try and make myself look amazing. I just show you my experience. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad and everything in between. And some people really don't like that. And MISC Games, now I could be putting words in their mouths that are not true, but they appear to have really taken umbrage to my honesty. And uh, I think that's odd because they sent me the game to review it. And that's what I've done. And everything I've said is true. So why would they be upset with me? I don't know. But at the end of the day, it is getting better. At the moment, I think they're panic patching, which basically means that there are so many broken things. I did warn you about this in my review. If you haven't seen my review, go watch my review. But I did say that we're going to have so many issues, so many bugs, that the reviews on Steam are going to get hit, and that's what's happening at the moment. Now, they're panic patching, which means they're trying to fix as many things as they can as quickly as they can, which means that they've lost focus, they've lost structure, they're not being careful, and as such, they're introducing new bugs, fixing old bugs, uh, reintroducing old bugs that they've already fixed. That's what panic patching does. It's never a good thing. But it's always the people at the head of the company, in my experience, having worked in the industry, who push the developers to, be, to work as quickly as possible, rather than methodically. 
So all you do really is you fix six, introduce three more. So really, you've only fixed three. Whereas if you just took a little bit longer, you could fix three without ever introducing any new bugs. And by being so methodical, you might even fix more than those three bugs. Because you're being so methodical, you're seeing, oh, hang on, if that little bit of code here breaks this, then by definition, that will also break this. So I can actually go and fix both of these bugs, even though we didn't know this bug existed, I can see by methodically going through my code that this bit of code here is going to break this and this if this scenario is persistent. So things like that are what happens and they will get to that point but I think at the moment they're in a bit of a panic state which is not surprising because you know they're a small company they're trying to be successful and they're a great company. This is the thing that frustrates me. I'm actually on their side. I really believe in this company. I know how talented they are and I love the work that they do. It's just that having worked in the industry, I knew this was gonna happen. I even sent them an email and said, hey, don't release the game like this. Now, to be fair, that was when I had a month old uh, dev version, which I wasn't supposed to have. So it was really broken back then. It's much better now and it gets better every day. But um, yeah, that's just the scenario we're in. We're gonna see a beautiful sunset, moonset, sunrise. What's gonna happen here? What do you call this? A solar eclipse? No, it's not. What is this? The moon going down. I've not seen this in the game before. This is going to look beautiful. This is definitely, definitely going to be my thumbnail if I don't forget to do it. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? I don't even know what the button to take a, a screenshot is. I just randomly smacked a load of buttons and hope that that's worked. But that's, look how beautiful this game is. Isn't that stunning? I love that so much and this game is so good. All the groundwork is there for this to be the most sensational simulator. You know how Microsoft Flight Simulator is for, uh, for flight sims right now? This could be the sailing equivalent. Especially if they introduce just some sailing boats. I know it's a fishing simulator. I'd love to see a side project where they just focus on sailing boats. Just sailing boats. And if you want to fish, you can fish. And if you just want to sail, you can sail. And if you want to race, you can race. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Hopefully, they're going to make so much money off this game that they can employ more people, expand a bit as a company, and really start focusing on stuff like that. I would love to see it. I really would. Imagine having a little rowing boat that you can just row out and fish over the edge. <gasps> that would be awesome. A fishing simulator, like a proper fishing. How brilliant would that be? Absolutely love it. Look how dark it is now. Look how glorious that looks. It's like a thumbnail maker, this game. It's so beautiful. Maybe I can get a bit closer on that. Look at that. Sensational. I'm still not doing anything, by the way. It's kind of nice. You know, I just get to prattle on, talk a load of rubbish. Um, hopefully that's you know not irritating you. Uh, if it's uh, entertaining, that's a bonus. It's just how my broken, aged brain works these days. Again, look how pretty that is. Got the reflections on the water. The water looks beautiful. I just wish we had waves. I just wish we had bad weather like we did in Fishing Barrent Sea. And I wish that bad weather was potentially dangerous. But it does look better. It looks stunning. It's a little bit too see-through for my liking. Um, but, I mean, that's just a tweaky thing. That's something they could fix. It's not necessarily a bug. It's a feature that could be improved. And they will improve it. Once they get to the point where the game is stable and almost completely bug-free. And it's just a shame that they've stopped talking to me. It really is. I'm quite, I'm quite upset by the whole thing, to be honest with you. I've just had a realisation actually, because we have two channels. We have Sim UK, the review channel, and we have Sim UK Ultimate Realism, which is the gameplay channel. So, if they don't know about this second channel, then they won't see all of this fabulous footage that I'm putting together. And they may think that I've just made three videos and then disappeared and not bothered with anything else. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll send them another email just to say, hey, look, 
I've got some Let's Play series where I talk about everything and hopefully provide some good ideas and suggestions for the game's development. I'd really appreciate it if you took a look and gave me some thoughts in return. And obviously, uh, you know, I'll, be, I'll be aware of the fact that they've just released a game and they're trying to get it up and running perfectly. So I know they're very busy and they've no time to talk to me about where's my bloody steering wheel? Why haven't I got my steering wheel configuration set up yet? You promised me, where is it? I want it now. I'm not that kind of person. I'm very relaxed. You know, I will keep asking and each time I ask, I will become less enthusiastic about the idea. But I'm not pushy. I'm not a pushy person. All right. <laughs> now press that like button, God damn it. How dare you come and watch my channel and not press that like button. Out bloody rageous. That's a joke, by the way, in case anyone's panicking. I just suddenly went through my head there might be children watching. That was a joke. I was just messing about. Sorry. Didn't mean to scare anyone. You don't need to press the like button. You don't have to do anything. Just sit down, relax, enjoy the gameplay footage, and uh, yeah, just be cool, man. Just be cool, chill, relax. It's all right. All good. So I think we must be coming close to uh, having all of our nets in, all of our big nets in anyway. Um, let's just have a look at the old thingy-majoggle. Oh, it doesn't tell me how many I've got. Well, that's a tad frustrating. Whoops. So we'll just have to wait and see. If she stops putting pots down, then we know that... Uh... Oh, maybe... Maybe I just bought one 75 line. Oh, well, in that case, it's not a big deal. In that case, we're going to get... 39 lines out and one short one which is not a problem at all oh well that's good I've just cheered myself up let me just get rid of these 25 totally pointless alerts devs I hope you're paying attention let me let me just click my mouse 25 times to get rid of some alerts that I don't need to see at all uh, just just to make that absolutely clear my thoughts on that Now in case uh, you're playing this game, do you see how that changed colour over here? That's an indicator that you can then put the line down. So in case you're still doing this manually, you know, having watched this video, I can't imagine anyone's going to be doing this manually again. But having watched d this being done, uh, no, that's not what I mean. Having, having previously done this uh, manually, uh, that's something that I didn't notice straight away. But when that changes colour, that means you can put the next net in. But I do spend most of my time in that view. So I don't even get to see it half the time. But uh, for those of you who play with it on, you can see it. You can also see how soon after I can set a net, my automated system sets the net. So I think 10 seconds is actually the sweet spot because very rarely is there a big gap between the time when I can put a net in and when I actually put the net in. I don't know why we're doing five knots, by the way, because autopilot is set to 12. Oh, we're doing five knots because I'm putting the net in. I Sorry, yes. Drink more tea, talk less rubbish. That's what I should be doing. So it tried to put the net in, failed because we're too close. It's accelerated to 7.1 knots, 7.2. We're trying to get up to 12 knots. So the autopilot is working, albeit very slowly. Tried to put the net in again just before it went off. And then we go, boom. So it works really well. Very impressed. Oh, so impressed I could have a little nap, couldn't I? Goodness me. So I've got some books, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Can I just tell you about one of my favourite YouTubers, please? Just for a moment. Um, like I say, I, if you've ever watched my about Who Do You Think You Are video, uh, then you'll know a little bit about me and about how I'm not the kind of YouTuber who's trying to make my... I'm not trying to be better than any other YouTuber. I really don't care. I have no... Balls. I have no balls? That's not what I meant. I just dropped my headphones on the floor. Sorry. That's why I said balls. Look, proof. There's my balls. Um, yeah, so my favourite, too many thoughts, not enough gobs. Um, 
So I'm not one of those kind of YouTubers who wants to try and make out that I'm the best YouTuber in the world or I'm particularly amazing at any one thing or whatever. I just, I just enjoy simulation. I just, I like simulation games. I like sailing, I like flying, I like spaceships, I like submarines, I like tanks. I, I'm just interested in stuff. Always have been. Um, so I just enjoy playing them and if, if I can share my gameplay experience with you and that helps you out, brilliant. If I can create some tutorials that help you out, superb. You know, it's cool. So um, my favorite, one of my favorite YouTubers in the whole world is a guy called Lindy Beige. Now if you've never seen Lindy Beige, definitely go check him out and then come back here and give me a big fat thumbs up and a thank you for introducing you to this, this man. He is surprisingly interesting. And I say that, and if you know who Lindy Beige is, you know what I'm talking about. But he is surprisingly interesting. Like, he has made a video on his shirts that he wears. And it's, he's such an interesting chap that that video is actually interesting. I wish I had one eighth of the talent he has to entertain people. He is phenomenal in that sense. Anyway, he was reading a book, or he did a video about the Iliad. And so entertaining and um, inf influential is uh, Lindy Beige that I actually decided that I was going to invest in the Iliad. And it's quite a, quite a thick book, as you see. And I rarely get the chance to read. So, I mean, whilst we're here, <laughs> Whilst we're here, uh, not having to do anything on the ship, I thought I thought we'd have a little a little read. So please do feel free to skip to the next chapter in this episode because um, for the next 20 minutes I'm just going to read a book. I'll read it aloud. But I'm not just going to read it <laughs> and go. That's interesting, isn't it? Did you like? I didn't realise that. That's so informative. Right. Life and times. Homer and his. Or will I get? Will I get plagiarised for this? I may have to cut this out of my video. I don't know how it works. I'm going to take the risk purely because I'm interested in, in this. But I'm reading this book because of, because of Lindy Beige. Okay, I purchased this book because of, because of Lindy Beige. So uh, yeah, definitely go check him out. He's a brilliant YouTuber. Very informative. If you're into like history and um, uh, like army facts and, and stuff like that. Very engaging guy. Very good. Homer to whom the Iliad and the Odysseys are attributed is thought to have been writing at around 800 to 900 years BC. And the poems are thought to mark the beginnings of Western literature almost 3,000 years ago. Many believe that they were not written by one person and that several were responsible for composing the poems. But works are essentially very lengthy poems or, more accurately, lyrics or rhapsodies as they would originally have been performed in song in ancient Greece. Well, I didn't know that. See, I should have done some homework because I hate poetry. But maybe this book is going to change my opinion on poetry, I don't know. Homer lived on the Aegean coast of what is now called Turkey, but was then a part of the Greek Empire. The ancient Greek cosmology was filled with mythological stories that were, thought, that were taught to children by way of explaining the world around them. All manner of gods and monsters were central to the stories, and the Greek islands and the mountains served as realms in which different scenarios were played out. Intertwined with mythology were legendary tales of significant historical characters loosely based on truth. How do they know it was loosely based on truth? It may have been real, for all they know. Um, this all added up to a complex and vast folklore going on? Why is the boat going so fast? Doing 11 knots. There we go. It was folklore that Homer, either in the individual or collective sense, drew from in his epic poems which include the Iliad, effectively the prequel to the Odyssey. So there's another book I should have bought, but I didn't. These two works from the foundation for subsequent Greek culture Society would use them as points of reference and guidance in the same way that many have used the Testament of the Bible to instruct their way of life. So it was that Homer's poems became manuals for appeasing the gods and living peaceful and fruitful lives in ancient Greece. As for Homer himself, it is a matter of considerable contention between classical scholars 
as to whether he ever took a bath. No. <laughs> as to whether he ever existed and when. There is very scant evidence available, so it seems likely that he may be a mythical figure, an old father time, grandfather to the nation. As a result, any literary works of significance were attributed to him, simply because it was impossible to know who the real author or authors were. As there were great as there were a great oral tradition of storytelling in ancient Greece, it is more likely that the epic poems were developed and refined over generations by many orators. Perhaps a politician realised their worth as... Oh my God, there's a word I don't know. Pedagogic text? And ordered scholars to document them for that very purpose. Or perhaps a master orator or rhapsody had them documented so that his apprentices could travel to different regions of the Greek Empire and recite the same exact texts. Okay, I'm going to find out what that word means. If you know, type it in chat. Uh, comments. I'm not streaming. I really need to... Would you guys like to see me stream this game one time? Just one time. Maybe we'll do some nets and then I can like focus on talking to you. Because I don't need to, I don't need to even look at the screen. I don't even need to be in the room to play this game anymore. I'm that good. Pedagogic. Pedagogic. Oh man, I can't even type it, let alone say it. See, pe ped pe pedagogical is educating, isn't it? Yes. See, I'm familiar with that word, pedag pedagog... I can't say it. Pedagogical. That really, that really puts me in my class, doesn't it? That really does, that word. Um, so what does pedag pedag pedagogic mean? Pedagogical means, you know, educational. I'm not sure ped pedagogic is a word, perhaps. Uh, maybe if I type it correctly. Pedagogic. Pedagogic. Ah, found it. That's the same thing, relating to teaching. They, sh they show great ped ped pedagogic skills. God damn it! What an awful word. I clearly wasn't taught it. My teachers weren't pedagogic at all. Useless teachers I had. Bloody awful. Most entertaining though, some of my favourite teachers. My geography teacher at school was the most... He was Greek. Uh, was he Greek? I'm, I'm pretty sure he was Greek. If he wasn't Greek, I apologise. And um, he was the most... He was the funniest guy I think I've ever met. He was just so entertaining and he really liked to be liked. And most of his lessons were full of him just entertaining us and being funny. We were all laughing and engaged. Oh, it's brilliant. Never learnt a bloody thing. Didn't learn a single thing in geography. Failed that completely. Didn't learn a single thing, but I loved you. I never missed a lesson. Never once missed a lesson because he was so entertaining. Never learnt a bloody thing. In contrast, my maths teacher, uh, who was also very entertaining, never missed a lesson of his either. Mr. Howarth, his name was. And um, yeah, he was a great teacher and such a good teacher, in fact, that I was predicted to do very badly in my maths exam and I finished second in the class or something. Something like that. Purely because of his excellent teaching, but also he was very entertaining as well. Slightly distracted. What a strange episode this is. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure everyone's ditched this by now. I would have done, I'm pretty sure. I don't, I'm certainly no Lindy Beige. Let's put it that way. The central focus of the Iliad is on the Greek warrior Arche Achilles. Achilles. Achilles, I say forcefully. And the anger he feels at the Trojans and those individuals who have wronged him. A combination of fact, myth and legend, the poem tells of the Trojan War, set within the walled city of Troy and the surrounding area. Homer celebrates war in his depiction of characters, suggesting that their competence or bravery on the field is what deems them as worthy or respectable. The realities of war are apparent in his gruesome descriptions, and he seems to support the notion that glory on the battlefield is preferable to family, life and love which I imagine back in the day it probably was. Certainly times have changed, I'm sure. But Greek, I think you'll find if you speak to Greeks, they're quite red-blooded. Quite red-blooded on the, on the most part. And the Turks, in fact. I'm just, I'm just trying to think of all the Turks and all the Greeks that I've met. And yeah, they're, they're quite passionate people. 
There's no denying that. Right. The central character in the Odyssey is the epitomous Od Od Odysseus. Odysseus? Odysseus. Odysseus. Oh, I don't know. See, I'm, I'm being shown up here. I'm showing myself up. The story is epic in its scope and describes the many heroic deeds and adventures of Odysseus as he attempts to find his way home after the Trojan War. One of the major themes of his work is the play-off between the human qualities known by the ancient Greeks as Metis and Hubris. In simple terms, Metis is best described as intelligence and common sense, or cunning and guile. Hubris, on the other hand, is excessive pride and self-confidence. In essence, they are opposed traits. The perfect individual needs to have a measured balance of both in order to avoid failure in whatever life throws at them. Now that is quite an interesting paragraph because that really does appeal to me a huge amount. And that's very much how I feel. Like my equilibrium is slightly out of kilter there. And I'm certainly not hubris. I actually think my metris has been somewhat diminished as well. And I'm trying to find my middle ground again. And that's probably my struggle in life right now. And I'm sure many of you can attest to that. You must be having similar... This has turned into a totally different experience, hasn't it, guys? I bet you weren't expecting this. Ah, oh, dear. Sim UK, you never quite know what you're going to get in a video. You really don't. Almost anything can happen. The original meaning for the term nemesis was punishment meted out to those who displayed excessive defiance of the gods, which could result from an imbalance of these qualities. The poem is also fundamentally about the human sense of belonging and homecoming, a theme ubiquitously familiar to all people and one that echoes throughout the poem as Odysseus, 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 Odysseus finds himself in a huge variety of different situations in his quest to return home to his wife and son. I'm actually quite looking forward to reading this ridiculously large book now. The Iliad and the Odysseus are entirely written in dactylic or heroic hexameter verse. Okay, there's a new curveball for me. I'm going to have to go Google that in a second. It has 12, 110 lines. Dactylic hexameter describes the rhythmic pattern or meter of the verse, which uses six hexa units, known as feet, dactylis per line. Dactyle usually means finger. Oh yeah, dactyle, yes. Dactyle usually means finger, but it is used as an allusion to fingers walking the page like feet. The reason for this consistent form throughout the poem is due to the oral tradition of reciting poems in song. It made recitals more entertaining because they were performed rather than being delivered in a dry and monotonous way. However, a great deal of the poetic form has been lost in translation from the Greek to other languages, including the pesky English, the Iliad. So that's just a, a prequel to the book. So if you'd like to join me in the next episode, we'll probably do chapter one. <laughs> Don't worry guys, that's not gonna be the thing. This is a book for me. I haven't read a book for a long time. I've been reading um, the Red Baron's book, his uh, autobiography, just published weeks before he died. Um, but I haven't got that far. Oh, we're on our last net. Look at that for timing. So there you go. Hopefully Sim UK has brought you a bit of entertainment, a bit of fishing and a bit of culture. Where, where else on YouTube do you get that? Probably Lindy Beige, I'd have thought. Except he doesn't do any gameplay, does he? And I've never seen him fish. So there you go, Lindy. I've got one up on you there, sir. If his next video is a fishing video, I will probably laugh my ass to bits. And I don't even know what that means. So there you go. I'll have an unexpected response is basically what I'm saying. So we've been fishing pretty much all night. Look at this. We're in the daytime. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Absolutely stunning. And the sun is coming up. It's a beautiful dawn. Let me just click these ridiculous, unnecessary alerts. And then we'll put our last 75 line out. And that's our very last net. No, it's not. We've got two left. Oh, well, that's irritating. I didn't see those two. Okay, so we'll get rid of the 75. I think we've only got one. And then we'll ch chuck out the other two... Uh, the other two thingies, the other two nets. 
And then we'll go all the way around back to the beginning and we'll go pick them all up. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? This could quite possibly be the longest video in YouTube history. Well, no, in Sim UK history, perhaps. So, I mean, there are benefits to the game being this uninvolved, aren't there? The simple fact that I don't have to do anything is, in some ways, very much a, a benefit. So we're just going to switch the crew out. Just for fun, just to keep it entertaining. See, if we had hotkeys for the crew, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we had hotkeys for rest, cook, prepare, net haul, machine gut, do you know what I mean? If we just had hotkeys for all those things, I could automate that, I could put it into uh, voice attack, and I could quite literally control the entire crew with my voice. Now that would be realistic. There we go. So we only had 175 line, and it's out, it's gone, it's done. We don't need to worry about it anymore. So hopefully we'll continue on with the 165, the last remaining 165. Let's get that last bit of food cooked off. Don't want the crew sat there doing nothing or just standing still doing nothing. There we go. So that, I believe, is the very last one. No, we've got one more. <laughs> Quite clearly I can't do maths. Mr. Howarth, you're a failure, sir. You've let me down immensely. I can't even count properly. Now, why can't I close that screen? Because the stupid alerts are there, of course. Thank goodness we have those alerts, otherwise I wouldn't know I've just done what I've been doing for the last hour. Oh, that's a bit short. Why is that one so short? Maybe that's the one, this 75 line. Cool, so guys, we did it. We have set the lot. Look at that. That's quite an impressive set of... Uh, of nets is it not and please note we didn't set any of them now here's a tip for you that i always mean to do and always forget to do instead of starting dropping your nets there and going out very deep what you should do is go out very deep and then drop your nets on the way in that way when you get to the last few you're closer to the port really good tip one that i keep meaning to do myself and always forget to do so there stick that in your trumpet Right, let's take the boat back to the beginning. Six nautical miles that covers. What the hell was that? Were we still dropping the line in? <laughs> Hang on, 41. We can only hold 41. What's going on? Oh, there's a new bug in the game. Look, we're just dropping random nets that we don't even have. We can only hold 40 nets. How the hell are we dropping nets? Oh my god. Well, there you go, guys. There's a new bug I've just discovered. So using my technique, you could theoretically have unlimited nets. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that ridiculous? What a silly bug. I can't believe I've just found that bug. I'm not going to be able to pull them in because we can only hold 40 on the boat. So 41, 42, 43, they're not our nets. They're imaginary nets that don't really exist. Oh, bless this game and its buggy nature. This is why, this is why they should employ me to be their bug tester and their project manager. I would totally nail this for them. I would, absolutely. Right, let's stop voice attack from creating imaginary nets for the, uh, for the boat. How's the fuel situation looking? We've got loads of fuel. So, we're just going to sit and wait for seven hours I think and then uh, and then we're gonna go get them all in again whoopee isn't it fun eh who said fishing simulators were boring <laughs> you're wrong whoever it was uh, seven hours okay oh beautiful look at it absolutely stunning absolutely stunning the throttle is definitely buggy on this today I don't know what's causing that just accelerates on its own. Right, let's get the crew on the go. Everybody, all hands on deck. And if there's anyone left over, put your hands on Ant. That's a British joke. If you're not British, you probably won't understand that joke. And if you're British, you probably won't appreciate it. Ah, oh, yes, I'm on form today. 
I can tell this is going to be one of my most popular videos. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely ludiful, man. Right, because this uh, episode is so long, I'm just going to stop the recording and start again. <laughs>